Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach and a host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to uh, discuss something with you. And let me be crystal clear with you because I want to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to get out of that coffin. You try lifting the lid, but the enormous weight upon the lid prevents you from doing that. You try banging on the lid to unsettle the dirt. Maybe somebody will notice the dirt on top and start digging their way down towards you. It won't happen. It's just too much dirt upon you. You just think you're going to die. Usually, though, you don't think about death when you're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever cross your mind that you might overdose by abusing drugs and alcohol? You might lose the one thing that God gave you, free of charge, called life. And more selfishly, the people that count and need you most, you might end up taking your life away from them. People like your grandchildren, your children, your mother, your father, your husband, your wife. With this, let me leave one last thought. Don't be like the person that I'm reading about from these index cards that waited and waited and waited until it was too late to get help. Instead, pick up the phone and call me at 844-405-HELP and I promise you, I will help you take your life back before your life is gone. People also like Larry Geis from the Geis Academy at 516-458-2741. Larry Geis and I always tell folks like you, doesn't matter where you've been, it doesn't matter where you came from. What matters is you're here and you need and want and are looking for help for a brighter tomorrow. Larry Geis can be found at www.odysseyconsultant.org. Larry Geis at 516-458-2741. Larry Geis will take you from your depression to happier times, from low self-esteem to improve your self-esteem, from addiction towards recovery. Larry Geis from the Geis Academy, 516-458-2741. Larry Geis from the Geis Academy. Folks, I want to talk about what do you do when a loved one should die? God forbid when somebody should die. Well, I really never thought about it until it happened to me, May 31st, at 3.05, 2016. I lost my mother tragically from being hit by a truck. This checklist could help you cope with the practical tasks during the emotional time. When a loved one dies, you might face the overwhelming responsibility of closing out the person's life. There are many things to attend to, from providing proper tribute, to closing bank accounts, to canceling a gym membership. And many of the tasks require attention to detail, adding stress to what are, is already a very, very emotional time in your life. <clears throat> will you leave a fair will for your children? It's really important for if you're watching me, and and because uh, you know all of us have our day, so leave a fair will for your children. Don't cause the children to fight over a will. I just want to make that remark. Uh, ARP recommends a checklist of things to do when a loved one dies. A woman sits alone in a lawn chair next to an empty chair, and ARP recommends a checklist while she's sitting there. Uh, this was a commercial that I saw, and it really meant a lot because she was just sitting all alone on the lawn, and there she was going over the checklist. So that checklist really helps. Uh, to cope, cut yourself uh, some slack. Don't try to handle everything yourself if you don't have to. This burden shouldn't be placed on one individual, says Sally Herm, a uh, ARP elder law attorney and author of the ABA checklist for family heirs. When people ask that they can, uh, what they can do to help, take advantage of the offer and delegate little things here and there that need to be done. To do so, you need to have a full, clear picture of what needs to be done. Here's a um, checklist that we're going to discuss, and I want you to please write it down as you review it. Uh, what's in store should it happen to you? Consider which undertakings you can hand off and who is best to handle those undertakings. To do immediately, arrange for organ donation. It may be the last detail you want to think about, but arrangements need to be made almost immediately at death so the organs can be harvested as promptly as possible. Herm says. Now you got to also make sure that the person that's deceased uh, wanted their organs to be donated. Not uh, not certain about a person's wishes. Uh, two sources you can check: uh, the driver's license and an advanced health care detect uh, directive, such as a living will or a health care proxy. If the answer is yes to either one of them, 
The hospital where the person died will have a coordinator to guide you through the process. If your loved one died outside the hospital, that includes in a hospice or a nursing home, contact the nearest hospital. The staff will be on hand to answer questions about what's next. There is no course. Contact family immediately. Of course, you want to update the key family members, bringing them together in person by phone or electronically via mass email, Skype, or Facebook family page is an opportunity not only to comfort one another, but also to share information about important decisions that must be made. Some of them immediately. Do any of you, for an example, know of an arrangement for the funeral home or other sources for burial wishes that this deceased person might have had? Follow body Beckwithel instructions. If you're the person that made arrangements to know, donate his or her body to a medical school, the family must respect those wishes. An advanced directive, living will, or health proxy may guide you to a particular institution. If the person hasn't made arrangements, the next of kin can donate the body, but the decision needs to be made as early as possible. To save money, get our membership discount on travel shopping and more. Go to ARP.com. Consider funeral pe preparations. If possible, bring together key family members for an early conversation. This is especially helpful if the deceased left no advance instructions or possibly made an unreasonable request. Factors to consider. What did the deceased want? What can you afford? What's realistic? What will help the family most? Beginning the conversation about the end of life can be and will be a really hard thing to, to deal with. Uh, sometimes it is really important that everybody gets in, involved. Uh, some of the do-it-yourself things you can do prior to death is will, living wills, trusts, and other documents. Um, there are uh, certain aspects of a person uh, that they might have only verbally told you, so it's really important that you get the family together. Ultimately, people need to follow their heart, mind, and gut about making these decisions, says Patrick Lynch, past president of National Funeral Directors Association and co-owner of Lynch & Sons Funeral Directors in Michigan. You have to know what will make your heart heal as best as you can. Choose a funeral home. Most people want a funeral home to transport the body from the morgue to its facility. The deceased may have identified which home to use and even prepaid for funeral services like some people do. If there's been no conversation about arrangements, the choice will be up to the family. Do some research, check with people who have had an experience with one particular one or another. Notify his close friends and extended family. Make a list of many people as you can. Find contacts through email accounts and personal telephone books. Contact an employer, organization, the deceased belong to, if necessary. Secure property. Lock up the person's home and vehicle. Is the car parked in a secure, legal area? Will the home be vacant? If so, you may want to notify the police. Dial a non-emergency number, of course. Landlord or property manager. Have someone care for the pets until a permanent arrangement is made. Very important. Notify the post office. Use the forward mail option, which I did for my mom directly to me. This will prevent accumulating mail from attracting attention. It can also inform you about subscription, creditors, and other accounts that need to be canceled. The mail that comes in will be very valuable in tracking down what you may not have thought of. It can be a treasure trove of information. These are things you need to do before the funeral home, uh, before the funeral. Meet with the director handling the funeral memorial arrangement. Use instructions your loved one might have left in the earlier family discussion to guide the many decisions to be made. Will the body be embalmed or cremated? Will there be a casket and if so will it be opened or closed? If the body will be cremated, will the ashes be scattered? If the ashes are deposited in an urn, will it be placed in a mausoleum? Where is the burial site? Do religious traditions need to be respected? Will there be contributions to charities in lieu of flowers? For a veteran, inquire about special arrangements. A range of benefits can um, help tailor a veteran service. You may be able to get an assistance with the funeral, burial plot, or other benefits. You can find many of these details about options on the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs website or call Veterans Affairs at 
1000. That's 800 827 1000 or your local veterans agency, often included in your local government listing. You can also uh, inquire about veteran survivor benefits. Documents needed to complete the checklist. Death, death certificate. Maybe about a dozen. I only got six for my mother. Because you do pay for them. Be careful. The social security card. Marriage certificate. Birth certificate. Birth certificate for any children. Insurance policies. Deeds and titles to property. Automobile title and registration paper. Stock certificates. Bank passbooks. Honorable discharge papers for a veteran or VA claim number, recent income tax forms and W-2 forms, loan installment payment books, and contracts. Consider whether you need or want other financial assistance for the funeral and for the burial. Help might be available from a number of sources, including a church, a union, or fraternal organization that the deceased belonged to. Phone or send an email to your local group. Enlist help for the funeral, relatives and friends may be needed to serve as pallbearers to create or design a funeral program, cook meals for a rapist gathering or a simple for the household of the deceased, take care of children or pets, or shop for any items needed for the funeral or household of the deceased. Arrange for a headstone. You can typically purchase a headstone through the cemetery or from the outside vendor of your choice. Consult the cemetery about rules, regulations and specifications such as color and size, particularly if you go on the outside vendors. Organize a post-funeral gathering. Depending on your tradition, it's called a rapist or a wake. It can be held in the church, banquet hall, or someone's house. Enlist the help of friends, relatives, or other people to help you plan this. Spread the word about the service. Once a date and time has been set for the service, share the details with your, uh, on your contact list, including an address to send the cards, flowers, and donations. Make a list of well-wishers. Keep track of who sends cards, flowers, and donations so that you can acknowledge them later. Prepare an obituary. The funeral home might offer the service, or you might want to write an obituary yourself. If you want to publish it in the newspaper, check the rates, deadlines, and submission guidelines. Don't include such details as exact date of birth that can identify a thief to start using that. Handle the ethical will, if there is one. An ethical will isn't a legal document, document, but rather a letter of sorts written to your family and friends that shares your values, life lessons, and hopes for the future. If the deceased left one, arrange to share it, maybe even have it printed. What to do after the funeral? Get duplicate death certificates. You may need a dozen certified death uh, records to complete un, uh, upcoming tasks through some require less expensive copies. Your funeral director may help you handle this or you can order them from a uh, vital statistics office in the state where the death occurred or at the city hall other local record offices. Each certificate record will cost in the neighborhood of 10 to $20 a piece. Don't forget to send thank you notes from the contact list that you acquired earlier. Send thank you notes uh, and acknowledgements. Consider delegating this task to a family men uh, member. Notify the local Social Security office. Typically, the funeral director will notify Social Security of your loved one's death. If not, call 800-772-1213 or contact your local office. If your loved one was receiving benefits, they must stop because overpayments will require complicated repayment. Even a payment received for the month of death may need to be returned. If the deceased was a surviving spouse, has a surviving spouse or dependents, ask about the eligibility for increased personal benefits and about a one-time payment of two fifty-five to the survivor. Handle Medicare. If your loved one received Medicare, Social Security will inform the program of the death. If the deceased has been enrolled in Medicare prescription drug coverage, Part D, Medicare Advantage Plan, or had Medigap policy, contact these plans at the phone number provided on each plan membership card to cancel the insurance. Look into employment benefits. If the deceased has, uh, was working, contact the employee for information about a pension plan, credit unions, and union death benefits. You will need a death certificate for each of those claims. Stop health insurance. Notify health insurance company to the 
deceased employers and coverage for the deceased, but be sure the coverage for any dependents continue as needed. Notify life insurance companies. If your loved one had life insurance, appropriate claim forms will need to be filed. You will need to provide the policy numbers and a death certificate. If the deceased was listed as a beneficiary under the policy, arrange to have the name removed. Terminate other insurance policy. Contact providers that it could include homeowners, automobiles, and so forth. Claim forms will require a copy of the death certificate. Meet with probate attorney. The ex ex executor should choose the attorney. Getting recommendations from family or friends might be the best approach, but an online search can also be an efficient way to find an attorney. The advice of counsel can save you a lot of frustration and running down uh, dead ends. If there is a will, the ex executor named on it uh, and the attorney will have document admitting into probate court. If there isn't a will, the probate court judge will name the administrator in place of an executor. The probate process starts with inventory of all assets, personal property, bank accounts, house, car, brokerage account, personal property, furniture, and jewelry, which will need to be filed in probate court. Make a checklist of important bills, mortgage payments, share the list with the executor, state administrator so that the bills can be paid promptly. Contact financial advisors, stockbrokers, etc. Determine the beneficiaries listed on these accounts depending on the time of type of access uh, of these accounts. The beneficiary may get access to the account or benefit by simply filling out appropriate forms and providing a copy of the death certificate. If there are complications, the executor could be called upon to help out. Notify mortgage companies and banks. It helps if your loved one had a list of accounts, including online passwords. Otherwise, take the debt certificate to the bank for assistance. Change ownership of joint and bank accounts. Did the deceased have a safe deposit box? If a password or key isn't available, the executor must uh, most likely will need a court order to open an inventory to safe box. Most probate courts have administrative rules about steps and access to box of the descendant. Close credit card accounts for each account. Call the customer service phone number on the credit card, monthly statements, or insurer website. Let the agent know that you uh, plan on closing the account of the deceased relative. Upon request, submit a copy of the death certificate or fax or email. If that's not possible, send a document by register mail with a return receipt. Once the company receives the certificate, we'll close the account as of the date of death. If any agent doesn't offer to waive interest or fees after that day, be sure to ask. Keep records of the account so you can notify the executor of the estate about outstanding debt. Notify credit reporting agencies. To minimize chance of identity theft, theft provide copies of the death certificate. The three agencies to be notified are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion as soon as possible so the accounts is flat, are flagged. Four to six weeks later, check the deceased's credit history to ensure that no fraudulent accounts have been opened. Cancel driver's license. Clear driving driver's license record will remove the deceased's name from the vehicle records of the Department of Motor Vehicle. Contact the State Department Motor Vehicle for exact instructions. You may have to visit the customer service center or mail documentation. Cancel all email and website accounts. It's a good idea to close social media uh, to avoid fraud identity theft. The procedure for each website will vary. For instance, Google uh, Mail, Gmail, will ask you to provide a death certificate or a photocopy of your driver's license and detail information. Cancel memberships and organizations. Reach out to sororities, fraternities, professional organizations that C's belong to and cancel all of those. Contact tax preparer. A return will need to be filed for the individual as well as for the estate in return. Keep monthly bank account records on the individual to the day of death. Notify election board that this person has, in fact, passed on. Um, make sure that uh, you take them off the registration. Folks, it is the most tedious thing to go through. My mother died on a Tuesday by Friday of that week. We had everything, including um, legal actions, all wrapped up in one nutshell. My wife and I, we went and put our heads to the grindstone from Tuesday night till Friday morning. Everything was done. If you have a plan of action and you don't have help, because in our case, my help uh, pretty much 
my sister, she has four children, so it was kind of hard for her to have to, to deal with all this, besides the fact that she was grieving tremendously. And my brother lives down in Virginia. Um, so uh, my wife and I, we just put our heads right to the grindstone. And uh, if, if you're organized, things will happen quickly. I hope to God you got information out of this, and I hope to God that uh, it, it was very helpful. And until next time, may God bless you.